really what you want to have, it's just like as you're learning to embrace and be conscious with life, is you want to have both a feeling and also a will. You see, a lot of times people focus on just one of those two. And it's kind of a mix. And so the feeling, what you're doing is you're attuning to that feeling. And so it's, it's already there in the consciousness field. It's just like your experiences. People don't, if you start looking at your experiences a little bit differently, if you looked at them as, as things you attune to, instead of those are you, it's no different than like picking a college course or an elective, right? But most people don't like choose a, a course in mathematics and then they think I am mathematics. But when people are tuned to, oh, I had this job or I had this uprising or I had this parent, they think that's who they are. I had this lesson. Someone told me this, and now that has to be me. Do you see? And so there's a feeling aspect that's a part of our evolutionary growth on the consciousness. And then there's also, on the other side, there's the life aspect, which is a development of your form that you do through your will. At first, your will, what you're doing is you're developing a will as an individual. So you might think of like Leo the lion finding their heart kind of thing. But eventually that will is connecting to a divine will. And so there's a sacrifice that happens. Do you see? So there's, a, there's an aspect in space in feeling and there's an aspect in time. And what I mean by aspect in time is most of our present moment is being influenced by our past, right? It's being influenced by the stories of who we think we are or the limitations that we think we possess or the pride that we possess, the confidence or the lack thereof, all those stories we tell ourselves, right? And so that's the past pushing up to show us our instinctual nature. And then from the future, spirit is dropping things, breadcrumbs along the way that we kind of toss in the mix because we want to learn certain lessons or whatever along the way. It's trying to help guide us. And so what we're trying to do is learn how to be really present in the moment. You see? So... In order to shift some of these things, one of the things that we're going to do tonight, for instance, is we're going to play with, for instance, I am this, I am that. People tell themselves, I am weak, I am stupid, I am am emotional, I am whatever, right? And what we want to do is, the reason we're saying those things is because we're allowing our past to come into our present. And instead, what you want to do is shift those old statements to I was and bring in new statements, I am. You can decide the new statements. But there's also, in a way, the will. Remember, spirit is in the future and you're building towards what some might say is God's will. Think about when do you use will in a statement? I will do this. You see, will is future tensed. People don't tend to look at will that way. But what you're doing with the will is you're calling new things in. You're starting to learn how to be the co-creator. So instead of stuff just coming from the future to influence your now, you're learning to become the co-creator and now you're building new things in your now. Do you see? That's the power of the will. And so that's what we're going to... focus on a little bit tonight but I like to mix things up a little bit and not make it too 
simplistic or, or like things we've done in the past. And so I'm going to allow you to, I'm going to give you a subject area to think about the statement that you want to try to work on tonight on the first meditation, okay? Another important thing that I just want to mention because it's going to tie into later and it'll kind of tie into what we are just doing in the beginning is, how can I say this in a way that... So we have two main paths of evolution that we're building. One is consciousness and one is life, okay? The consciousness one is built through our perceptions and our feelings, and it's through expanding relations with the things that we interact with, our experiences, our catalysts, and things like that. And eventually it ties into a, an intuitional level. That's the path of it. The consciousness field is in the astral emotional realm inside of us, just like this physical field is for us right here in this room, right? The, that is the realm of where all the lessons are and where all the stirrings are because the stirrings help create the drive for you to grow through the struggling, the harmony through conflict. It's kind of the earth vibe. And so it's very colorful, right? So when you're feeling really stirred up by something, a strong emotions, for instance, you might see a, even a certain color. You might see red. And, but, or you might feel a violent reaction inside of you or something like you can't control or trembling or whatever, right? That's the consciousness field. That's the present field, right? That's where those lessons are going. On the other side, the life aspect is going from the physicalness of this individual up into the co-creator, into the mental plane. The difference between the astral field being very colorful and emotional and all those kinds of things and the physical field being very sense-oriented, all you're doing from the physical field to the astral field is you're going from like seeing to clairvoyance, you see? Still illusionary senses. When you get into the mental field, there's stuff beyond that, but it's, the, it's very arid. When you're first, most people don't rarely ever go into that realm because they're not ready for it. You got to go through and do the character development. So that way, as you get there, because most people, as soon as they hit that area, now all of a sudden, all the motivation, all the phenomena are gone. No more, hey, I'm seeing colors, or I got this cool little vision, or this. Because most of the visions you're having at that point, people don't realize they're being charged up by your subconscious. Right? And so what happens as a protective measure, when you get out into that field, it's bland. A lot of the gifts you thought you might have had are turned off, or some of the support. Because what you need to show is a steady perseverance. And then in time, then you start to connect up to something much, much more beautiful than you could have ever sensed in the astral field. You'll have glimpses of it sometimes because there's a shortcut through your heart that you can get to there that we're not going to go into. But to stay there and to really be able to work in there takes a lot of effort and a lot of sacrifice and a lot of aloneness that most people rightfully aren't ready for yet. Okay? But I'm just letting you guys know what's ahead in the vision in case one day you might be working in there or having questions of how it kind of comes together. So what we're going to do tonight is play around with these things. For you guys, I'm going to give you an area to work in. So for the Sagittarius the area that you're looking to come up with something, a, a statement that you want to kind of release from the present field and put it into the past eventually. Yours is going to be re related around either gaining knowledge or expanding your worldview. So try to see something within there. 
Are you a Sagittarius? Too? Gaining knowledge or expanding your worldview? Worldview. Yep. Sorry. No, sorry about that. Leo's um, around self-actualization and personal development. Scorpio's setting big goals and having a clearer vision. Either one of those. Aquarius, or just around uh, uh, your relationships. And lastly, Pisces, around health and work-life improvements or balance. Okay? So we're going to go into this. We're going to do a short little thing and just to get you warmed up. So close your eyes, center yourself. You don't have to think of what the thing is yet. Just try to remember that aspect. Allow that aspect to come in. Does anyone need their thing repeated? Maybe for some of you, you can see how that aspect. The reason that we chose these aspects, because based on the sign that you're born under, this would be the stronger influence right now with the lion's gate. As you start breathing in with the inhales, envision a yellow light entering your body. A light that will charge up your desire to create with a positive energy. And as you breathe out, let go of your fears and doubts about any of these creative projects. Imagine this light showering all of your creative work with fresh and bright ideas. And even allow this first mantra to wash over you. I'm receptive to new creative ideas. And I welcome inspiration now. Allow the light, this creative light to come in and wash away all distractions, limitations, judgments. Using that influence that we talked about, think of a story about yourself that you've believed for so long. One which is holding you back from being the best version you could potentially be. Form that story into a simple sentence. For instance, I am emotional. I have trouble with relations, whatever it may be, just form that sentence. See how colorful that sentence is, how charged up that sentence is for you personally. Now we're going to step back to remove ourselves from that statement. So picture in your hand right now is a stone. Inscribe that statement into that stone. And then visualize yourself putting that stone on the ground in front of you. Now see yourself backing away from that stone a few steps back outside of the field of influence of that stone. And 
And now from this neutral standpoint, looking at that stone, you can see how it used to so strongly influence your approach to life. See how it caused you to narrowly interpret people and experiences. Notice how weighty and dense that stone is sitting there on the ground. going to continue to play with it. And so now imagine all of those experiences that you had in the past influenced by that stone, all the perspectives. Picture them all in one bubble and bring that bubble into your hand and then start to rub your hands together building friction building heat. Keep doing this until you think all those past items are now finally warmed up in your hand and turned to dust, little particles of dust in your hand, representing all of those past experiences and perspectives. Gather up the heat, see the dust building. And when you're ready, imagine yourself throwing all that dust over to that stone that circles around that stone away from you. All of those experiences are almost like magnetically called to that stone as you stand a few steps back from it. The next step in that statement, the statement was, I am this. Shift it now into the I was that. And keep saying it, repeating it with the past tense several times, noticing what it does to your energy centers. Notice how it feels. Don't worry if you don't 100% believe it yet. Just keep repeating it. Allowing your mind to reframe things for your body. Notice in your body if there's any strain in your eyes, your cheeks, your back. If there's any place you feel closed off, release that. Let that go to the stone. It might have been a place that you had it built up from that energy. Notice if you can start feeling a little bit lighter a little less burdened. As you've created the space for something new. Now what you're gonna do is, the I am statement that you chose, throw that over to the stone too. Allow that to hit the other side of the stone to be engraved there. We're gonna create some room in the future 
to see if there's any other thing that might come in, maybe even a clearer statement for you. We're going to give each of you a mantra to repeat. And then you're going to practice repeating this mantra to see how it might influence you. If you're a Leo, the mantra that you can start saying in your head is this. I accept who I am and I seek improvements. I accept who I am and I seek improvements. Scorpio. I am sure of my skills and I attract prosperity to me. I am sure of my skills and I attract prosperity to me. Sagittarius, I am ready for new experiences and I confidently grow. Aquarius, I draw healthy and perspective relation, I'm sorry, and positive relations into my life. I draw healthy and positive relations into my life. Keep repeating the mantras. The Pisces, I build a harmoni harmonious and satisfying calendar. I draw a harmonious and satisfying each of you. Tap into the spirit of that mantra. Keep repeating it at your own pace. Notice how the mantra feels inside of you. Notice how you might react to it. Imagine how that mantra might shift your perspectives with the people and experiences that you encounter. Now that we've released the past, we've opened up the present, and we're allowing the future to guide us. Using the power of this mantra, the reinforcement of the lion's gate, and most importantly, your powerful free will, going to set the space so you can create a new mantra for yourself. What mantra speaks to you? One that you want to carry with you. One that's going to be your new past and current present.
Feel the spirit. Feel the heart of this mantra. Relate to it. Give it life. Give it some cues. Does this mantra, if it was going to have an animal, what animal would relate to it? If this mantra was to have a time of day, if this mantra was a room, what would it look like? This mantra was a flower. I'll walk back over to that stone, the stone that holds your past, flip it over, place your new mantra onto that stone, inscribe it. And then slip that stone into your medicine bundle. <coughs> and then slowly and gently come back to the room. Begin to wiggle the toes or just the hips. Take a deep breath, roll the shoulders, whatever it may be. Um, if any of you have a mantra that you'd like to share, you don't have to share your past one if you don't want, and you don't have to share it all, but if there's any, it helps to start to speak it out. If any of you enjoyed or didn't like or have suggestions for that meditation, it's free for any of you to speak. Normally I would pass this around, but I don't want to cause too much pressure on each of you to share your mantra, so for this time, I'll just... Open up the circle if anybody would like to share. It's kind of important. The, the reason that at first I was saying to come up with some other things because then you're, you're giving it some more contextual feel to it and some other things to help bring it up into your memory field. But also when you're going to plant into the subconscious, you're going to have to repeat it a lot. But see, if you, your subconscious is filled of times of the mineral kingdoms, the plant kingdoms, the animal kingdoms, and all of the influences they might have on your instinctual nature. And so if you can relate it to some of those things, you're helping to entrench it a little bit more into that instinctual nature. God, you're not trying to get rid of your past. And that's where people, I think, make mistakes. And it's less clutching, right? Well, yeah, so the, the idea, if you try to get rid of your past, really you're just giving it more attention. What you're trying to do is take away the colorations. Do you see? Let it become arid. You see, then it's more related to the mental field again. And it's not so attached to you. Do you see? And, and, and the idea is to love your past. Do you see? There's all kinds of beautiful things in your past that you still can't see. That 
if not in this lifetime, when you go to do your soul's review, you're going to be looking at it and you're going to see some things and it's just going to have you completely teared up. How beautiful it was and how giving it was. And, and it was just a missed opportunity. That's all. And they happen all the time. It's natural. Anyone else? Feel free. You doing all right back there, Just? I'm doing great. Cool. Anyone else? Another thing that you can do, because um, we might do this in a, f in a future group, is um, if you really want to work through it, um, you could like get a piece of paper and just put a couple of the things that you tell yourself some of the limitations or whatever that that are are not true they're just things that you've decided to believe right and really go into them and look at them and allow the tears to come up and then under each one put a couple statements that are now your new true statements. And as you do that, the tears are going to come again. And what you do is over time, you read them both. You don't get rid of the bad one. You read them both. And the reason you read them both is you're trying to train your subconscious when something comes up Here's that thing. Now here's my new response. You see? So you need those anchor points. Otherwise, you're still not being conscious and the things are coming up and you're getting stirred. Do you see? So you want to have those anchor points in a training of a new habitual response. This comes up. Here's my new statement. This comes up. Here's my new statement. This comes up. Here's my new statement. So it doesn't have time to get life. Do you see? So that's part of the reason you're doing it. And as you do that enough times and you're building that, over time what happens is the old statement loses all of its weight and it kind of just fades. Do you see? It'd be a good psychological test. We'll have to try it sometime. I'm sure it's done out there somewhere. The, the idea is how do you more engage with life and you do that through feeling and perceiving right and for the majority of our life the perceiving of the moment is very limited because we're not actually tuning into the moment we're projecting the past onto the moment do you see? The present moment in the beginning should, if you were purely in it without the past, would be completely unknown. Do you see? Do you mean the I was or I will statements completely unknown? I'm, I mean the entire moment would be completely unknown. Because, see, you, you wouldn't be saying the words or that's a chair or that, you, you see, you, this is the ground. Mm -hmm. This is my life. This, it would be completely open to be fully embraced. Do you see? And so what happens, though, is so I say the word abundant and everyone in here brings up a different meaning. Right? If they're even hearing it. A lot of times what people are doing is they have a thought in their head, and so they're not hearing really. They're not engaging with it because thoughts separate you. People think they're being present when they're having thoughts, but they're actually no longer in the present moment. They're separating. They're going to another space, do you see? And so the idea is our individual perspectives are only one degree of a 360 degree circle, let's say. And so the better we get at broadening 
our relations and our understandings of different perspectives and stuff like that, we start to see things through a widening range, a widening lens, right? For some of us, we're going to think a lot, and some of us are going to feel a lot, and some of us are going to will a lot. You got to learn how to balance those things out. Otherwise, you don't realize you're projecting so much into the moment. We project into all the things we create. We project into the ways that we share or don't share. Do you see? It's always happening. And so what we're trying to do is, is respect that and honor that, but not be that. So you can broaden your horizon, right? And so if you were looking at something that was a statement that you were carrying with you that is causing you to really limit your potential or limit your engagement with the moment or with the person or with the relation or with the job or with the, it's all kind of the same, with the things. So anything in this physical world or anything in the emotional world, the thought world, if it was so ingrained in something that was really coming up for you and then all of a sudden you said, I'm releasing that and now I'm bringing in this other thing, which is kind of like a counterbalance to that thing. If you were being really sincere with it, it probably would stir you up a lot. If it's just a concept, then it's not gonna stir you up a lot because you're still separated from it. Because that's what the thinking mind does. Do you see? And it, it's an important part of it, but it's not the only part. So for the thinkers and the willers, you really want to try to feel into it a little bit more. Do you see? So you can manifest and tap into that abundance. Remember, you need the attunement, the conscious attunement, and you need the alignment, the willful alignment. You need both across time and space to really tap into the experiences in this realm. This is a very abstract concept, so I'm just trying to come at it from different angles. Uh, the second gift of the Lion's Gate is transformation. And so we're gonna be building on, on that a little bit in the second meditation. Um, I think we're good. Is everyone ready? I'm going to jump into the second meditation. So clear off what you have so far. Don't worry about your rock. It'll come right back to form. Feel a little cleanse. Picture you're standing under a waterfall for a moment, just allowing your energy fields to cleanse. In the last age to build to the astral consciousness, started teaching people breath work starting teaching people to be vegetarians and those kinds of things. And this next age to step up. It's about purity of motive. So cleanse yourself in that waterfall. Give yourself permission to be here in this time and space. Allow yourselves to get comfortable. Shed off the tensions.
In this meditation, we're going to welcome you to the two worlds. We're going to enter this land of the two worlds through the portal of the Lion's Gate. Standing before you is a portal of swelling light guarded it on each side by a lion. You walk up and stand before this portal. And upon doing so, the lions roar. This is the signal that you are ready for transformation. So slowly walk up and enter through this portal. And as you do on the other side, you'll find a land that is lush with vivid colors and warm tones. It's dreamlike. In this first world, there's everything you could possibly imagine. Notice all the beauty around you. Take in the brightness, aromatic smells. Feel the excitement in the air. charged environment all around you. Yet inside, you continue to maintain a sense of peace and serenity. Notice all the waterways and falls around you. It almost seems like this whole world and everything around you is made of water. Allocate a few minutes to enjoy, to explore, and to play in this magical space. Now it's time to proceed with your journey. Notice ahead of you there's a sandy trail. Follow this trail until you come upon a rainbow bridge and wait there before crossing it. Notice how this bridge is made of light. This is the bridge of transformation that can be traversed and crossed from the illusory dream world into the world of co-creation. 
So step up on this bridge, if you will. And then walk across it and get ready to take your first step off into the next world. As you take your first step down and make contact, you're immediately struck by the dryness in the air and the light dusting on the ground. As you start to take a few steps forward, as many as you like, nothing changes, just more vastness. In this world, there is no longer that sense of excitement. It just is. There are no attractions. There are no repulsions. Just a lot of space. It might feel a little disorienting at first. But as you stick with it, and as you learn to let go of your need to connect with the things of the senses, you learn that that sense of aloneness might be transformed into unlimited abundance. That aloneness starts to feel like oneness. Sit here for a few moments in contemplation and embrace the spirit of perseverance. And while you thought there was nothing around you, no thing around you, you look down and notice that as you kick up some dust, there's a stone on the ground. And as you pick it up, you notice it's that same stone that you discarded from earlier. On one side of that stone 
as your eye was. And as you flip it over, you give your attention to the I am. Read that statement again. The I am that's inscribed. And as you read that new I am statement, it starts to give you a little bit more compassion for the I was on the other side. You start to realize that they're still both the same stone. Notice and appreciate how powerful this stone is and how quickly things can be turned around. From now on, whenever you hear that old script start to play, just simply turn the stone back over and recite the new script. I'll notice these feelings growing deep inside of you. this new empowerment supported by the lion's gate. You realize that it is possible for life or energy to flow unimpeded for you. You can sense that you're headed in the right direction. You can feel potential all around you pouring down like the rains. Allow yourself one more moment to soak in this abundance. And before you leave these worlds, see if you can tap in to the sense of hope and feeling of faith, the grand designs, to see how much good there is that's coming to our world in the future. And then turn around, head back towards that rainbow bridge, crossing over the light, back into the water realm. In the distance, there's a beach. Head to that beach. Pick up the grains of sand, let them fall through your hands. And as the sand start to hit the ground, so does your spirit come back into your body. And then take a moment to thank the influences of the Lion's Gate, the work that you've done this evening. Allowing yourself, granting yourself permission to be open 
to the unknown, to the mysteries, to the seeds that you planted. Then begin to wiggle the toes or just the hips. Poke your neighbor, whatever it is. See if you, it's a very important practice to see if you can simultaneously allow your body to rest, but have your mind be alert. That is the discipline. The better you get at that, the stronger you are to build, to go into the mental realm. Because you're not your body. Do you see? starting to take back the reins. But in order to do that, first, you got to follow that old teaching that energy follows thought, right? And so these things start with a new programming. You come up with a new thought, your new seed, and then you start to feel into it. You bring it into the dream world. And then you start to mix it in and it starts to then build into your physical world. And over time, your physical world is just the accumulation of all your past experiences and your stories. You're putting new stories in. You see, you're, re, you're reprogramming the, the baseline computer. You can do it for anything. That's why people that have known me at different times in my life know a completely different person because I'm not the same person anymore. We, we all see it in ourselves in little parts of our knowledge accumulations and stuff like that. But we're always being reborn. And we're always deciding what stuff we're going to keep with us because they think it's us. But realize you're just tuning into experiences, that's all. What you're doing is you're learning to be more conscious and you're learning to start connecting into the co-creative field is you're learning to do new programmings. You're getting that power, that theta state. Most of what happens is in your first seven years, you're not built yet. You don't have an emotional consciousness yet. You just have that physical consciousness you're fully just in that programming state. And so all the stories that you pick up along the way, you don't realize, but they're then the new stories that you use for the rest of your life, all the impressions that you picked up. Do you see? And then you start to add in the emotional field and the feelings and desires and all that. But those programmings from those first seven years, they don't have to be who you are for the rest of your life. unless you choose it, unless you will it. You got to realize all things you're doing is always a continual choice. So what you might notice over time is the statement that you chose tonight also has a vice and a limiting aspect. So some of the things in the statement you might want to turn that stone back over at certain times to see a whole new aspect. See, what you're trying to do, remember, is have a full view, not just the view that you want. Do you see what I'm saying? There, there's always the, there, there, there isn't anything that doesn't have a vice and a virtue when it comes to things. Um, So the idea is you come into this life and basically you're going through this cycle of life through a certain amount of cycles. Um, but anyway, you, what you're doing is basically the way that I would see it. So take it with a grain of salt. 
before you come into this life, you're choosing what experiences do you want to be charged to, to have come at you, and also what past karma maybe you want to work on. And then there's different levels of that. There's personal karma. There's, it goes on because um, it grows in groups just like we grow in groups. Um, so the idea is as long as you still have experiences or karma to work off, you're going to keep coming back in, right? And, and karma is built based on your desires for certain outcomes or not. Do you see? And so there isn't any shortcuts to it. You're going to have to work through all of those different desires. You can't just turn them off and beat the system. You can turn them off and not engage the system for a while, right? You could just walk around and be completely arid all the time and not be swayed by anything and be completely mental. But that's not the way that you're going to gain experiences because you have to have that balance. So it's important to look at these balances. First, you've got to be authentic with who you are. And then through that, start to see things through different lenses. So there's a difference between going out into the, the real mental plane and then just going out into the thinking mental plane. And what I mean by that is, because we covered this at the retreat in a way, there's different personalities and different personalities are going to like certain things. So like Char's personality is going to love lots of detail. And Teresa's personality is going to love lots of abstract. And so they're going to design meditations that way. They're going to engage meditations that way. It's important to try to have both. Not just lean on just you as an individual personality because you're missing a bigger perspective opportunity, in other words. But first, get to know you and be all right with that, and then just leave room for growth. And then that way, when you're growing, you're not growing from a sense of lacking, because you already know who you are, but from a sense of growth and abundance, do you see? And what will happen is, as you're building up those strengths and those developments, and you're not so tied to who you are, you're better equipped. So when you do start to get into the realm of co-creation and working with power, you're not so corrupted by it. So you're using the power for the good of all rather than for black magic kind of things, let's say. Do you see? And that's the beauty of it, the dance. You'll get glimpses of things and motivations and, and just be all right with where you're at with the things. And just try to give yourself the best equipment to engage life the way that you want to engage it, right? It's sad to say, perhaps, if you're trying to control other people, but it's important that there's people out there that are deciding, I don't want to be loving, accepting of life. I want to be controlling of it. Doesn't sound great because those people turn into some of the tyrants and other things, right? But in the long run, they're charging us up and creating these polarities so we can have the potential to do the work. If you don't get caught up in the illusions of these physical lives, in that dream and emotional world, and just play in it and have fun, you won't try to control the outcome so much. Do you see? Because accidentally what you're doing when you run into those kinds of people is you're being just like them. You're saying, no, you shouldn't be that way. Let me control you. You're not supposed to control. Do you see what I'm saying? even with the best loving intent. Do you see? And so that's what you want to look at. And what will happen is, as your lights are starting to light up here and you're expanding in your relations, eventually you hit that outer courtyard of the heart and you're working through your desires and your ambitions and your fears and all that. And the lions are going to let you into that inner courtyard. And that's when you hit what they call the 
dweller on the threshold or the, the, the night, dark night of the soul or whatever, that's when you finally meet that aloneness that only you can define. Or some might say your greatest fears or whatever it may be. And once you get past that illusion, then you go from that aloneness to that all oneness. And then it's, then you're getting into what you're asking about with group consciousness. Group consciousness isn't, it's just being objective and what are people's assets and their weaknesses for the group, not what is their personalities, but how does that contribute to a greater group purpose? You see, and that comes in intuitively over time. And then you start learning how to decipher between the differing degrees of energetic influences and teachings and teachers and those kinds of things. Uh, try, if any of these fit for you guys that are something that you want to work on for yourself, try one of these practices on yourself. Go through the meditation at home and see what comes up. I'm talking mostly the first meditation. Um, the, the second meditation We're getting get close to opening up things that really not supposed to open up yet. Because um, you don't want to really be going out there too far and opening up things. You want to really just working on character development and balancing out our energies and our perspectives and learning how to really lovingly accept life. If we can all do that, we're winning at life. All the rest of the stuff that we talk about can be done much, much further in the future. That's it. Questions, ideas, closings. Um, so just to close your eyes, we'll close out the circle. We've gathered up some energies tonight. Most importantly, we came here with a loving intent. Some individual group desires. Feel that loving light circling around, swirling. Send it out. Send it out to the world. Send it out to a specific person. Let it do its magic. If you have someone who you think needs a healing, just send it to them and ask for a healing. But don't try to control how the healing works. Send it out, share it. It's limitless, it's magical. It's out there and it's also inside of you. So then pull back to your field. Seal off your orc egg, purify, cleanse your altar. Make sure nothing else is attached to it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Peace and blessings to all. Have a good night, everybody.